Hi friends, it's Meredy here with Not Just For Boys Kit Club and today I have the um, process video for you that go along with the printed instructions for the kit that is called Graffiti Art. And first I'm gonna show you what's included in your kit. First you're gonna get a title called You Rock and it's just white in your, in your kit. And then you're gonna get a Shimmers Creamies Daffodil paint jar um these are dry and we'll add water to them to activate them so you're gonna have a daffodil one and an inklings blue lagoon and the inklings is a little bit shim shimmerier than the creamies that's what the difference is between inklings and creamies you're going to have a black um acrylic paint by dina wakely and that comes in a little one ounce jar you're going to have a bag of film frames and they're white and black and there are 15 pieces i believe yeah 15 pieces and they're just different sizes and they look like um film frames and those are in black and white and then you're going to have a jar of sequins not just for boys sequin mix that matches this kit very well and the papers that you're going to get are this Vicky Booten um, print shop. It's called Stargazer and has stars on one side and a teal grid on the other. And next you're going to have a Vicky Booten print shop called Typeset and it's this text on one side. It says all kinds of things. Grateful for the people who make us happy. This life, my favorite. I'm here for the good times on this day. And then it just repeats over and over and over those phrases. And then the back is this blue mixed media pattern and then you're going to have a piece a piece of reminisce and it's the urban vibes line and it's called urban grunge and it's this grungy graffiti looking on one side and bricks splattered bricks on the other side and you're going to have one sheet of this limeade i believe it's called limeade and it's american crafts textured cardstock and two pieces of smooth white cardstock so you're also going to have a sheet of full color instructions in your kit and um, those instructions have cut guides on the back side of them that show you exactly how to cut these papers down to get ready to make the layout. So I'm going to turn off the camera and go cut these down and I will be right back. Alrighty guys, I have everything cut. Um, we're going to kind of do this page in, in steps. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna lay out both pages, like the right and the left side on here, to get the background papers laid down. And then after we're done with this, then we're gonna map the pictures and figure that out. But this is very simple, how you lay out the background papers on this layout. Um, I put this one that has the black splatters on the bottom left, on the right, on the left side. And this one with the little splatters up here on the right side. Did I say the left side? I don't know. Apparently, I don't know my right and left. And then we've got these two little strips. So we're going to turn them to the B side. And if you like the look of torn edges, you're going to tear just down one long side of each one. Not both sides, just one long side. And tear towards you, exposing the white core. And we're just going to do that to both of these strips. If you like that look, if you don't like torn edges, you can use a decorative pair of scissors on this. You can leave them perfectly straight. You don't need to tear them. Um, but especially on this layout, it has that grungy feel. So I think the torn looks really nice on it. So we'll do that. And then you can adhere all of this down because it's all going exactly where it fits. You're not even going to see any of the white paper on your background. So we will go ahead and adhere everything down. And I will get it adhered down and I will be right back. Okay, so everything is adhered down. And I'm going to take this edge that we tore. And I am going to like fold it with my fingertips up so it's torn but it's also folded just to add a little depth there. So I'll just do that to both sides. So the B, the other side of this paper, the B side or the A side or whatever side is on the bottom, 
it kind of shows. But I like that look, or you could leave it plain, plain and torn, it's up to you. But I will use this technique. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is grab pictures. Um, on this layout, I, um, what's the word? I cropped my pictures quite a bit. I started with a bunch of four by sixes and a bunch of three by fours and I cropped them. Sometimes they're kind of odd sizes to fit the layout. So just because I am showing you one size, Oh, doesn't mean that um, that you have to do them the same size I am. A lot of sizes will work. We have this branding strip with the stars, and we're going to go ahead and cut that in half and put it on the ends. It just needs to go on this side and then identical on this side. This whole middle section is going to be covered with pictures. So... Even if you don't have as many pictures as I do, I still think you can cover this whole middle section with pictures. So, ooh, we're gonna start with these pictures. Now, I'm gonna start on the, the I wanna keep my, my page out so you can see how both sides are working together. But I'm going to start with the left-hand side. So I originally started with two four by six pictures and a three by four picture but I cropped one of my four by sixes down to a three by six. So I just took one inch off of the side. My other four by six, I left as four by six. And my four by three, I actually had to crop a half an inch off. So it's really three and a half by three. But I am going to put a white frame that came in the frames right over this picture. That's why I had to crop it a little shorter because this frame is only three and a half inches long. It's not four inches long. So that can kind of help you crop, figure out what size to cut this little picture in. And in order to get the frame to stick to the picture, I decided I wanted to use a tiny attacher. You can use glue or not glue, but um, double-sided adhesive and hide it in the, um, like the little edges here, and you won't be able to see it, but I wanted to use my tiny attacher. And then I matted this four by six picture on the green paper. So I'm gonna mat that really quick. It's just easier to show you this kind of as I go along with each side of the page. So I matted this one on the green cardstock. And just gave it a thin mat, not too thick. And then my other picture, which you absolutely could leave this picture as a four by six and it will still fit. Cause see, it will just be like an inch wider. Do you see what I mean? It will still fit. So if you didn't want to crop this picture at all, you could leave it as a four by six and it'll work. But I made it as a three by six and I matted it on the B side of this. And I tried to pick a place where it didn't look like I was gonna lose too many stars, too many full stars if I matted it. I don't really care if it loses some of these stars with the pink, cause I don't, we're gonna fussy cut some of this, but I don't care about the pink ones. So I'm gonna make sure to mat this picture right here on the back of this corner. So I'm gonna mat it right there because I don't care much about those two stars with the pink and I'm just giving this a thin little mat and you have plenty of that green paper that you could mat this on there there's plenty of that green paper so if you are not wanting to cut this star paper apart and you're nervous that you're not going to have enough stars to fussy cut after then um, you could do this on that green paper but see it's got the pink the two pink stars on the back. So I didn't lose any good stars. And I'm going to keep this, I'm actually budding up the mats all the way to the edge and budding them all the way up to each other right here. And this one is going to overlap in there. Okay, but I'm not gonna adhere these down quite yet because I want to get this other side going and show you how that 
how that is working too. Got my matte paper here. Now this other side, I cut down the pictures quite a bit to make them fit right. So I started with a three by four picture, but I cut a half of an inch off of the side because it's going to also sit in one of these white frames. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple this in just like I did the other one to the white frame. And I'm gonna staple down here. Okay, so that picture is gonna sit there. And then I took another four by six and I trimmed it down to three by six. So I trimmed one side off of the in one inch off of the side. And I'm going to try to fit this in right next to where I cut before. Again, if you don't want to use um, if you don't want to use up your stars on the other side of this, you can mat this on the green paper and that will be just fine. But I'm just going to use a couple stars and I don't even care if some of my stars are halfway cut off the corners because I can tuck them under the pictures. So now we've got this one. And then this last section here, I actually cut a rectangle of this green. I'm not gonna cut it yet. And then I matted my pictures on it. So I kept one picture as a three by four. And then one picture was three inches tall, but one and a half inches wide. And then I have another picture, which used to be a four by six, but I cut it down so it was only two inches wide and five inches tall. And then my last picture was a five, four by six, but I cut it five inches tall and two and a half inches wide. And it looks kind of funny like that, but it's because it gets this frame right on top of it. And you can see there that it's sticking out at the bottom of the frame a little, so we can just trim that little bit off. So I'm going to go ahead and staple this. And then I'm just gonna trim that little bottom edge off. <clears throat> And since I trimmed that bottom edge off on this picture, I'm going to have to trim the same amount off on this picture so it is even. So I'll just trim a tiny little bit off the bottom. And then I'm going to pretend like I'm going to mat these right here, make sure it looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and adhere them down. I'm just gonna scoot them to this side so it's nice and square. I'm going to go ahead and adhere them down. There's not a space between these two. And then I'm gonna cut out this mat just around it. I hope this makes sense. Um, you can do these in different um, sizes and different crop sizes. You just have to play with it on this rectangle to make it basically look like a little collage of photos right here. But that's why I didn't cut this matting paper down right away because um, maybe you want yours to be a little wider. Like you don't wanna cut these two so skinny. If you want these two a little thicker, then your whole mat will be a little thicker. I hope that makes um, good sense. And then we can go ahead and cut this out along And then we've got this block, big block, and it's so much easier to work with too. So I am going to butt all of these up close, and then I'm going to, oh my gosh. Yeah, so we're not, I'm gonna, this is how they're going to look, but we're not going to adhere them yet. There's a few more pieces that we're going to add, and then we're gonna do some mixed media, and then we will adhere them at the end. So next, I'm gonna get three of these, 
um, film strips. I think I'm gonna bring everything down just a little. So these two pictures right here line up with each other and then nothing else really lines up with each other. This is staggered real low, but these two pictures line up with each other. It kind of keeps the layout looking balanced. And the last thing is gonna go under there and peek out. Okay, next we have got our mixed media. And I'm gonna go add water to these real quick. Um, Daffodil and Blue Lagoon. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to these and grab a brush and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my paints and I grabbed a paintbrush and I'm just using a fairly large paintbrush that I got, I don't know, probably from Amazon. You can get them at probably Walmart, Michaels, Amazon, Hobby Lobby. So I like using the bigger brush because then I don't have to do a whole bunch of little marks to get a big area covered. So I use the bigger brush. And then I'm just gonna say, we have a ton of these little frames left over that you're not using on this layout. So you can use those on future layouts that you do. And um, I think that we can start the paint. So the first color paint that I'm going to use is gonna be the yellow because I don't want to drag I don't want to paint a little bit of blue and then yellow and then drag the blue into the yellow. So I'm going to start with yellow. And what I want to do is I want to put a yellow big area here and then I want to put blue next and then a yellow area and then blue next and then a yellow area and blue next. So that's my plan. So I'll start with yellow. So I'm going to go yellow, yellow, yellow. And all I'm going to do is slightly move the pictures down because I kind of need to know still where the pictures lay and I'm just gonna real messy I want to get it all the way under there yellow got yellow I might need to get a little more water in this because I've already used almost all of it yeah I didn't get my paint too wet um let me go get a little more water. So I didn't get it too wet, but apparently I did not get it wet enough. And then I'm gonna put more yellow from about here to about right about here. So I'm just gonna move this guy down so I could still see where it's going. And as you could see, this is super messy. Um, I try not to leave a big glop of water, make it real thin. Um, because the water will make your page warp. So I've got this, and now I've got a little bit more water in here, and I wanna make splatters. So to make splatters, I just grab something that I can tap on. And the yellow splatters don't show up as well as what the blue splatters are gonna show up, probably on camera, but in real life, show up pretty good and that's it for the yellow paint this is like super easy mixed media on this um the pattern in the back makes it like you can't really make a mistake on this because it's still got pattern in the back and it's still distressed looking everywhere and honestly the whole layout is so distressed looking that you really can't mess it up so i'm gonna rinse my brush and i'll be right back I feel like if you're wanting to try a little mixed media, but you're a little nervous, this is the way to go because this is very minimal. Okay, I got a lot of water in this one. I am going to dump a little oh, into my lid. When you get too much water, I dump it in the lid. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in with the blue and I'm going to just kind of fill in those spots that I was saying I wanted blue. It's okay to mix it over the yellow a little. And really, I'm like scribbling it on because I just want it to look like graffiti-ish. Like I'm not trying to make it look like I'm painting a design.
The longer that you let your water sit in this paint, the more pigmented the color will be. If I was to try to paint this like moments after I put the water in here, it wouldn't look very dark blue. It would be very, um, very um, dull, like very light blue. But I've let this sit in here a few minutes, so it really soaked up the pigment and the color. I do want this to go all the way down to these stars. Okay, and again, I'm gonna do splatters. done with the paints um got a splatter here so I'm gonna let this dry I'm gonna actually move this whole thing off to the side and let this dry really good before we use the black acrylic paint on it because that's what we're gonna use next so I'm gonna move these and we're gonna work on our title and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my paintbrush right now too I should add that with these paints um I like to go ahead and leave mine open to dry out, uh, which takes a couple of days to get completely dry. I don't like putting the lid on them like this. I have never had anything bad happen, but I have heard people say that it gets like icky and I don't know if it's moldy or mildew or what inside when you close them wet. But um, so I just leave mine open to avoid that. I've never had it happen and I let them dry out for a couple days and then I go ahead and put the lid on them. So I just wanted to say that tip. Okay, so you've got a cut title in your thing that says you rock. It's not very big, but then again, this layout has a lot going on and a lot of pictures. So we didn't need a really big title on this one. This is the perfect size. And um, we're gonna go ahead and alter this title. I am coloring mine black, just with black ink and one of the little ink blending brushes. You can color yours any color that will pop off your page or off your pictures. Another color that would really pop is uh, like the greenish yellow that the paper, the matting paper is, and the stars. That one would pop really well. Um, teal, like a bright, bright teal would pop really well. Any color that's in your photos on this page would pop really well. Um, yeah, so I just did this and got it nice and saturated. So it looks like this was cut from black paper basically, but it wasn't, it was cut from white and that way you can alter yours any color that you would like. So I'm gonna go off camera to finish this, the word rock, but it's essentially the same way. You just have to hold it, kind of be careful. These aren't super, super fragile. It's pretty thick um, cuts between the letters, but you can tear it, it's just paper. So. Just kind of be a little gentle, and I will see you in just a second when I'm done with this. Okay, you can see my U Rock, and it's nice and colored in. And now I am going to go back and get our layout because um, I think it's time to do the acrylic paint on it, actually. I'm still gonna use this. And I'm just gonna set these off to the side and I'm gonna grab the layout. And I'm only gonna grab the left hand side right now because that's all I wanna work with, okay. one side at a time. I used the lid to my sequins mix to do this, sequin mix to do this. You can use anything you want to do this. You could use a cup, like a little cup, a bigger cup, any circular shape thing that you have. Okay. You can use this lid but it's a little small like it's not not as big of a circle and it might be kind of hard to tell if you get this all the way clean and this lid is easy to tell when you get it all the way clean because it's clear so this is what we're gonna do like i said if you're scared or hesitant to use mixed media on your layout this is the perfect layout to use it for i do want to tap this paint back down so it doesn't stay stuck in this little uh, 
applicator because it will get dried out if it stays stuck in there. I live in the desert and things dry out really easy. Um, if you're afraid to use mixed media, this is, this is your time to experiment because really this layout right here, this graffiti layout, it looks so much like graffiti, like you really can't mess it up. So the first thing that you're going to do is get paint all over your little circle tool and you're just going to go in your layout and do this. Get some more paint, okay? You might want to test it on scrap paper to make sure and then you're just going to do it and you can do this. Don't be scared to mess it up because again, this is the whole look of this layout is super grungy, super mixed media y. Like you're not going to mess anything up. Let me see. I'm going to try to. I'm going to get a little more paint out here. And again, I'm going to tap it down so it's not in that applicator drying out on me. It's because I messed around too much practicing over here. I ran out of paint. I think some of these are going to be buried by pictures anyway. But you get the idea. And then let's do the other side of the layout. Put this off to the side. Gonna get the other side. And this one, I just want a little right there. And you could do them thin like that, or just twist a little and do it thicker. So if you want to just play a little on your um practice paper to the look that you want. I like both looks, so I'm fine with the thin and the thick. And it even looks kind of cool to smear a little. Let me put one more here. This is all gonna get a lot covered up by pictures. So I just want a few. Um, the last thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go get your brush that you used before and get it wet again and get this, a little of this paint like really watered down. And then we're gonna use it to make more black splatters. So I'm gonna go get a little more water, water on my brush and do that. Since I'm making a video here, I just got a little water in my lid because I'm gonna have to wash this lid in a minute. And you don't need very much paint, but a lot of water. You want this to be really liquidy and then just add more splatters. And actually, I did decide to use a smaller brush than the brush that I used before. See, it's smaller. Because I didn't want huge black splotches on my paper. I just wanted some little ones. So we will do that to both sides, and then we're really going to need to let this stuff dry. But the good part is, is you already have some good splotches on this paper because that's how it came. The more water that you get, the bigger your droplets can be. But I don't wanna go too crazy tapping really hard because this is getting all over my work surface here. Okay, that's all there is to the black paint. So I am gonna move this, get all this paint, off my work surface here. I'm gonna go clean this up and we're gonna let that dry. I'll be right back and we're gonna fussy cut some stars. Okay, my sequin uh, lid is nice and clean, so I put it back on my sequin shirt. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab the paper with the rest of the stars on it to fussy cut. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fussy cut out a handful of stars. Um, if there's any that are going off the edge that are fairly good sized, I will cut those out too. I'm going to try not to get this one that has pink because there's not really any pink in my pictures or in my layout and I don't want it to be like suddenly some pink on this page, but um, you could cut out the ones with pink and just 
either let it show, which is awesome, or um, strategically place the pink like, underlapped under another star. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out some stars. I'm going to cut out this one. I'm going to cut out, I, bet, I guess I will cut out this one and I'll just underlap it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'll cut out this one too. I'll cut out those eight stars and I will be right back. I did decide I'm gonna cut out this one that's going off the corner here um, so that I can use it tucked under something. So this one is also getting cut out even though it's not a complete star. And I think that's good. I'm gonna save these little scraps right here just in case I might need them. I'm gonna throw away these guys though because they are not very big. Okay, <clears throat> I think that this paint is just about dry. So I think I can go ahead and adhere these things back down. So I'm gonna grab both of my layouts, both sides of my layout and lay them out again. I'm gonna add a little more adhesive here because the water in the watercolor is kind of making this text paper uh, be a little bit bumpy. I'm not too worried about it in the long run because it will be in a scrapbook and it will be flattened. But for right now, I'm just gonna do that. Let's see here. This one. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of this down. When I'm adhering this down, it's going from one page to the other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right through that little piece on my paper trimmer. So it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna run the adhesive on the little edges. So this adhesive you can't even see because it's gonna be buried under there. But this one, I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit on those two edges, just like that. Let me make sure these are lined up from one page to the next. Great. And now everything else kind of falls into place. I know I want this picture butt it up right underneath here and all the way to the edge. And this block, I want overlapping this, but all the way to the edge. And then when I've got these lined up, I can put this um, film strip piece. I know it's gonna go like that. And then I know these two pictures right here line up, so that's how I'll know where to put this one, the bottom and the top of them line up against right across. And this can just kind of overlap so it's not falling off the layout. Okay, and then this picture, can just be right against there. And this one can be right there. And you can use all sorts of configurations. Like these can go different directions. You're just gonna have to play with it when you're setting your layout up how you want it. Okay, now we can come in with these little stars and just kind of put some around See, I'll put this, oh, I'll put this halfway cut out one under there. And I'll overlap it with another one. So you can't even tell that it's partially missing. Um. I know I don't want a lot of that pink showing, so I'm gonna try to bury some of this pink one. Okay. 
And I'm gonna put a couple over here. And you don't have to use all of them, but since I have a couple left, I'm gonna switch out that pink one for that one. So I have even a little less pink showing. So I've just got a little pink right there, it's fine. And then I still have these two that I didn't use. And then you're gonna go ahead and adhere these stars down. And I popped the top layer of them up on foam tape. And of course, I ran out of foam tape. So I, I did pop this one on my original layout up on foam tape so it's a little higher. I popped this one up on foam tape. And this one tucks under there. I popped this one up on foam tape to sit on top of there, but like I said, I ran out of foam tape, so I cannot do that for this video, but at least I'm telling you which ones that I popped up. And then I popped this one up on foam tape. So you've got all of these little stars um, sprinkled about. And the very last thing that you're gonna do on this layout is take your sequins, and I just pinch a little in my fingers, and sprinkle it and where it lands. I don't want it to stick together too bad. Where they land is where I glue them. So I didn't want that one all the way over there by itself. It needs to go over there. <laughs> so I sprinkled a few right there and a few down here and a few up here. gonna grab one of these black stars because this didn't get any and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those right where they landed because it's pretty random looking and what I'm going to use to adhere these is this it's called art glitter glue and it's my new favorite glue where is my little tool that I want? It's over here. Here it is. It's my favorite glue lately for little tiny things because it's amazing and it comes with this little, you have to buy it separate from the glue, this little teeny tiny fine point tip and a, I think it's stainless steel pin that fits in it so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't rust. And it is so, it does such a little fine drop whoop, of glue because the point is so fine. I love it. And it doesn't warp my paper. I just love it. I think, do I dare say that I like it more? I used to love this glue the most for fine my zig glue pen i used to love it the most for little fine things like this um actually i didn't use that pen for sequins but i used to really love that pen for backing cut files um i think this is my new favorite glue for backing cut files it just goes on so nice and it doesn't dry super fast that zig glue starts drying pretty quickly so you have to work super fast and this one just kind of takes a minute so i really like this for sequins ah and i have a blank glue glue spot so i'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of these sequins on and i'm going to turn off the camera to do that and then i'll be right back to put on our title okay i think i can't remember if i said this but um we do carry this glue now in the store and I will put a link to this glue in the description of this video so you can find it. And if you want the fine tip, it's separate. You have to buy the glue separate from the tip. And then you read the directions that come with this to put on top to make it be the fine tip. But that's the whole reason I like this is for the fine tip. So we are almost done. All we have to do now is add this title that says You Rock. And I'm gonna add it right here. And I'm actually going to use this glue because, again, it's it will just not seep out over the edges because it's such a fine tip. 
So there's the word you. And then I'll do the word rock. And after that, this layout will be done. I'm gonna put still pictures at the end of this video, some close-ups of the layout that I made that I used actual photographs and not my little white place markers. Um, there is a picture of this layout at the bottom of your instruction sheet, of course. Um, there are close-ups of this layout in the listing on our website, which is also linked in the description of this video. So you can refer to that for close-up pictures and just pictures of this layout. Um, we have a Facebook community group that you can join called Not Just For Boys Kit Club Community. And our design team will be sharing layouts that they made using this kit, but not in the way that I used it. Like they went completely unique in how they used this kit. And I know that some of those layouts are gonna be amazing because our design team does really amazing things. They blow me away with all of their creativity. Um, but thank you guys so much and I'll see you later. Bye.